What is up everybody? I'm no Lex Given here with your afternoon snap and today we are taking a look at the finals from this week's Community Gaming Latin America tournament. And as you can expect, Blob is everywhere, but there are still some exciting stories from this event that I want to talk about. First of all, two different Blob lists. We're going to get into the gameplay in a second, but I wanted to throw both of these deck lists on the screen so you can see them in all their glory. Pretty similar deck lists. That's just what you're going to get with Blob Thanos. Seven of these cards repeat over the two decks plus the six stones. So they share 13 cards in common, but there are some key differences, notably the Lockjaw in that list over there. Uh, whereas this list might look really, really familiar to you. And that's because it is the list that won last week's event. And I think the really exciting thing about this tournament as well is that we're actually it's it's the same player. It's Cass that won last week's event, made it to the finals again for this one. So we're gonna be watching this from Cass's perspective here. They were nice enough to record this for me and they watched last week's video and they set their in-game language to English. So that way I won't have to do any translating on the fly here. So appreciate that. But Cass is up against Nalgadon who is also no stranger to competitive card game tournaments. They have done well on the professional Hearthstone circuit in the past, and now they are producing Marvel Snap content. And if you wanna watch not only this game, but the entire tournament, you can see that from Nalgadon's perspective on their YouTube channel. I'll leave a link for that in the video description. And Nalgadon, if you comment on this video, I'll pin that comment so that people can also easily find your video that way. So this is gonna kick off with a reality stone into the great web, drawing two cards for both players from Olympia. And, uh, oh, okay, so Kaz actually did make one change. I apologize, I'm kind of doing this on the fly. I have not watched these games yet. I will change the graphics on the screen in editing, but uh, Cass swapped out Okoye for Medusa. They said that they might be making that change. I wasn't sure if they had actually made that change or not, but instead of Okoye just playing Medusa for consistent power rather than the kind of early game power that uh, Okoye can bring. And I do kind of like Okoye, but I do also like Medusa and think that it's an underplayed card. It's just a, a two five, which is pretty solid. A little bit tricky to make it work in Morag since you can't play your first card there each turn, but you can always drop a stone and then drop another card into Morag. And that I believe is exactly what we're gonna see on this turn. Oh, looks like we might see Jeff plus Time Stone. Uh, I guess Jeff is more power into Shuri's Lab considering it will get the Shuri's Lab bonus. So Cass's deck is really focused on playing a turn three time stone with all of the five cost cards, like Professor X. Lemuria is going to be a pretty unfortunate location for them though this game because now they won't have the five energy because time stone isn't going to reveal until next turn. They might still be able to play a five cost card plus an additional stone next turn but it's definitely a little bit awkward. Meanwhile, Nalgadon potentially just set up a Lockjaw plus a Stone over in Lemuria, which could be a bunch of points about to be revealed for them this turn. Time Stone's gonna find Magneto for Cass, which could disrupt that Lockjaw if that was indeed what came down for Nalgadon, and it is Lockjaw plus Space Stone, and that Space Stone is gonna get fetched into a Thanos with a Kyera to back it up. But we do see that Cass does have priority. So moving around, oh no, no, the Soul Stone just switched priority by itself. I wasn't even realized, I was like, okay, it's just a stone. It's not gonna be able to beat three stones in Morag, but a Soul Stone will do that. So actually Nalgadon has priority here, which is going to make this Magneto draw a lot worse, but it looks like it still might be the play into Shuri's Lab. This is a pretty good play as long as Nalgadon doesn't play their own vision. Uh, Magneto will be able to lock down Shuri's Lab or potentially Jeff plus another stone into Lockjaw. But anything that can't move out of Shuri's Lab will then mean that Cass wins in Shuri's Lab, which is like a start to winning the game. So they are gonna go for the Magneto. The other play would have been playing Vision themselves. 
And we're gonna see Leech into Shuri's lab. So Cass has definitely won that location and they've taken Lockjaw out of the equation. So now Nalgadon cannot use their Lockjaw on the final turn of the game, but Cass is leeched. So this doesn't seem great for Cass here either. They draw Psylocke off the top and all of the other cards in their hand basically rely on their abilities with Vision being the biggest as a 5-8. So what is Cass going to come up with now to put some more power on the board? They can only play for one of these other two locations and yeah, they're, they're like significantly behind here despite having more power on the board. This could even be a retreat just because all of these lines are kind of terrible. You can't play that vision into Morag. The only way to bat, the only thing you can do here this turn is play vision into Morag or play like Psylocke and then Shang-Chi into um, Morag. But that doesn't really battle for Morag either. So at that point, if you're going to do that, you just play Vision. No, okay, looks like they're looking at this. That ties them in Morag, but loses them the game in Lemuria. Shang-Chi is... Shang-Chi actually wins in Lemuria, but it seems like a worse play than just moving Jeff over and then playing Vision into Lemuria. Less total points, right? So this could be what we see. You know what? Vision into Morag could actually do it. Oh, but you can't play the vision into Morag, right? You can't play the vision into Morag. So it is ultimately going to be a retreat because of that leash. That was a really, really tough puzzle. I'm very curious what Malgadon has and we can check out their video. It's not currently out. They've currently, at the time of this recording, have only uploaded the first two rounds of this tournament. But I'm very curious to know what Malgadon had in round one there. Edit your comment or leave another comment on your comment, Malgadon, or just tell people to, to go watch your perspective to see if you indeed had it. That was really, really close. I wonder if Jeff Center actually could have won that. I think it's very possible. But, but Malgadon could have also used Jeff plus like um, a stone, Jeff plus Shang-Chi, Jeff plus Wave, and just played both of them center. So that definitely could have won it for Nalgadon as well. Really tough final turn there. This one starts off well for Nalgadon as well with Mind Stone into Power Stone. I was gonna say, I think we could see a snap off that and that is a great retreat there from Cass. That is uh, definitely, key snap in times when you've got the best stone and your opponent has the worst one, put the pressure on and press that snap button to get yourself a free cube. And now we're on to round three. Oh, oh, here's what happened in the first game. Did you guys catch it? I just caught it. It's nine cubes to 10. Both players retreated in game one. So either player could have won that game if they just didn't retreat. Okay, I thought there was a chance that Cass might have had it with just Jeff center. Uh, they were a little bit afraid of what Nalgadon could have, but that is a really, really fun start. Uh, apologies that I missed it. I just saw the perspective that, that we're watching from, but we had a zero cube game one and Time Stone is not enough. Like, if your opponent plays Power Stone against your Mind Stone turn one, then you can snap. I don't think that you want to snap with Mind Stone against Time Stone because we could have easily just seen a Lockjaw here from Nalgadon. However, that sequence, that's a snap. Now, this game is strongly, and with that even more strongly, going to come down to who wins in Baxter building. So, I don't think the cast had totally won it, locked it up there just yet, but they are going to make Nalgadon retreat for one cube. These players are just battling for one cube a piece. This is the finals of a $150 tournament. Uh, I believe the cash prize is awarded in dollars. Uh, but th that is something that I wanted to bring up as well, because this tournament is run by Community Gaming Latin America. And I had some people in the comments last time curious because um, I think the language that Cass was playing in was Italian, or maybe that was one of the other videos. I don't remember. Um, anybody can play in these tournaments. You don't have to be from Latin America. It's just Community Gaming Latin America that runs it. They make all of their 
tournament announcement posts in both English and in Spanish. So if you can understand either of those two languages, then you can participate in the event. I should also mention Nalgadon's content is in Spanish. They are bilingual. They were able to uh, ha have a conversation with me at least. And uh, yeah, that, that's if you're looking for some nice Spanish speaking Marvel Snap content, definitely check them out. Uh, but check them out regardless because uh, you'll want to see that they uh, like how they got to the finals of a tournament, which is pretty sweet. And you can see every single round. So definitely check that out. We're going to see a snap from now that on here because of the peak. I do feel like the peak strongly favors Cass. Did I, did I, when I was doing my spiel, did I miss who actually snapped there? Because I would think that the peak definitely favors Cass. Now, we can see Cass's hand. It doesn't seem that great. So, kind of a good snap there from Nalgadon. Uh, Muir Island out of Reality Stone is going to make it, uh, okay, Jeff is a reasonable play there, get some additional power out of that. Then we're gonna see Lockjaw plus Time Stone. So that is the reason for the snap. We got a flipped Lockjaw. And then we're gonna blob away the whole deck. And Cass has Shang-Chi. They do not have priority though. So, Certainly, if you were cast, you were slamming that Shang-Chi center. That is the easiest Shang-Chi of my life. Now has one turn to play a Kyera. If they can play Kyera here, then they win. Cass is hovering that snap button. They want to do it. They don't want to give away that they have Shang-Chi, but they do go for the snap. Now Gadon either has Kyera or they are retreating right now, but this puts it all on the table here for four cubes. What's it going to be? That is, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a fun early blob. Turn three blob means that now, even if they are able to protect this blob with Kyera, they might not have that many points to play in the other locations. We saw Cast check out their cards in hand briefly a second ago. I wasn't paying close enough attention to see it myself. And it is going to be the Kyera to protect the blob. Kind of had to feel like it was coming. But now, if you're Cass, you are just trying to win both of these other two locations. And Miniaturized Lab is going to make it a little bit tricky to win, uh, to put more power into that location. So that is a little bit awkward here. And then we see Blue Marvel and potentially not even playing Mind Stone. So that way we can keep as many cards in our deck for Blob. So that's the idea, but Vision now, I think this is too many cubes to stay in it. They've got a large Vision. You have to assume they're gonna like, I mean, if they move Vision over and then play something else to Minilab, that is really, really tough to beat. I think they're looking at their emotes, trying to figure out which is the best emote. No, they're taking a look at what is left in their deck. Well, we can see here, that they have still got Magneto. Oh, oh, they're gonna battle for Blob Supremacy. Okay, well, I'm gonna trust their math. They've got Magneto, they've got Iron Lad. Okay, no, the math wasn't mathing. I, I, was, I was curious how they were getting up to 40, just because a turn three Blob is gonna eat so many more cards than a turn six Blob that they do not have the food to battle with Nalgadon's blob there in the center location. A really, really clutch Kyera, uh, which has been a, a huge card for this deck as well. So Cass is gonna walk away for four cubes. Maybe Nalgadon will also walk away, but I doubt it with a large vision on the board as well. Uh, yeah, we are gonna see Cass lose four cubes and now it is five to nine with Nalgadon taking the lead once again. So we are in high stakes mode. Cass was already hovering the snap button, but they're not gonna go for it just yet on turn one. Uh, that definitely would have been bold. Shang-Chi plus Blob, those are, those are good cards. Both players lead out with a Space Stone to kick this game off. And we could see Ninja move around. Probably not gonna fill up the Savage Land for either player. Uh, we're just gonna see an end turn from Cass, but does Nalgadon have anything good? 
Um, well, you definitely don't want to be playing Soulstone into Savage Land here, so it's probably just like Soulstone into Shadowland instead. Not a great start for Cass, but if they can find the Time Stone, they could still potentially find some nice plays. We're going to see Time Stone for Nalgadon, so that's going to allow them to set up Vision, Devil Dinosaur, or potentially Leech, or just Lockjaw plus an additional play. And then we've got Mirror Dimension, which will either become Savage Land or Shadow Land. So Nalgadon has to play to Shadow Land this turn in case Mirror Dimension becomes Savage Land and fills that location. Blue Marvel, all of a sudden looking pretty good. And we will have Iron Lad next turn from Cass, which like they're hoping hits Professor X, I imagine at this point, or potentially Time Stone. Time Stone's still good. Time Stone, and then you draw the Time Stone with your Iron Lad Time Stone. That could also be pretty reasonable. But for right now, it's just Power Stone, which is definitely not a big play for energy for Nalgadon. And I think like the best thing that they could have here is certainly Lockjaw plus a stone into Shadowland. Let's see if that's what it is. It is Reality Stone, which could mess with this Mirror Dimension. It will. Ongoing effects are now disabled. It's also going to mess with their Soul Stone and the Power Stone out of cast. That is Savage Land that comes out and fills us with Raptors. Iron Lad into Isle of Silence is a little bit tricky because it takes away Professor X as a live draw. And I think I would have liked to have seen the Iron Lad go into Savage Land here but we are gonna see a snap, and I do think this is a good retreat from Nalgadon. They just, I mean, they could play Leech. Hmm, maybe Leech is a reason to stay in it. This turn, they can't play Leech. This turn, all they can play is like a bad card, and that's the reason I think the snap is good. Uh, all they can really play this turn is Kyera. Anything else is, is, I mean, they're basically just skipping turn four because otherwise they're filling up a location that then makes them easy to predict later on. So I do like that snap and I do like that retreat there from Nalgadon. Are we finally gonna get to see Medusa in action? Maybe not because Nor Dimension might also be a really good location to play to, get some of those gins, and those will allow you to play some big cards as the game goes on. So that's pretty interesting, but you know what? Those gins have got to favor the Lockjaw player we could even see a turn one snap from Nalgadon to really bring the pressure. And I think Cass would have to retreat from that if just the threat of Lockjaw here. And that, that's kind of a really interesting thing about understanding your the or, or respecting your opponent in Conquest. So if Cass, or if, rather if Nalgadon really respects Cass, then they know that, well, yeah, you're definitely not putting Medusa Center into a space through and into a space thrown. So far, Koye looking like it maybe would have been a little bit better for this match specifically. Uh, but basically, if Nalgadon thinks that Cass is a good enough player to respect the snap that represents having Lockjaw, then snapping and just getting yourself two free cubes moving on to the next one seems like it could have been a nice way to put the pressure on. And we're going to see that snap come down on turn two. They also had a turn one stone to get the Nord Dimension rolling. However, now that you're cast, now that you have seen Space Throne, maybe you don't get out of this one just because there's not going to be that much more room for Lockjaw to actually get into play here. Reality Stone's going to turn off Nor Dimension. That's what the snap was about. It was that I am going to get two more gins. You are going to get none. Though, Nalgadon is still going to have difficulty playing those gins. They have to play them this turn because otherwise they are going to get shuffled back into their deck. So we're going to see probably two gins from Nalgadon and Cass is all of a sudden kind of looking like they're in a good position. Now, if Nalgadon has the Lockjaw here, Lockjaw plus Jin still is pretty crazy. But how crazy is it? This is a crazy game. I will definitely say that. This is kind of a wild one. Right now, I think, I think I like Cass's position. They do need to hit some good 
five cost cards, but they've got four or five cost cards in their deck. So Time Stone into Adelon is looking really good. Now the Dun's gonna fill up their entire board though with Kyera and a Jin. They can only make two more plays for the rest of the game. That's tricky. I guess Jeff can move into Space Stone, so they do still have some opportunity there yet. Mind Stone, Time Stone, and where is this Reality Stone going? It is, yeah, I can't imagine you play it into Space Stone here with how full up your opponent is. Mind Stone will first draw two of the stones, and then Time Stone and Reality Stone will draw two other things. Cass is only going to be left with one, uh, I mean, two more turns. So they will be able to play six cost cards on these final two turns of the game. Magneto into Space Throne could be a really good play next turn. We'll see if they are able to get that. And then Blob into the location that Nalgudon, Nalgudon rather, has filled up. Does seem like it's good. <sighs> Nalgudon just drew three cards off the top as well from Atalon, but I do feel like this game is currently favoring Cass. That might be crazy to say, uh, considering how good all of these gins are, but I think this Space Throne is just going to be tricky. Yeah, so Devil Dinosaur makes a lot of sense. I think you have to play to Space Throne kind of soon to give yourself enough opportunity. Otherwise, you're locking yourself out of one or several locations. Negative Zone, kind of interesting, but I don't think super important. And then this turn is just gonna be, oh, I think it is actually maybe Blue Marvel. Or do you have to battle for Mount Vesuvius here? Vesuvius, that's a real place. I should know how to say that one. Okay, Vision plus Power Stone to battle for Mount Vesuvius. There's a lot of options here. Jeff could also move into the Space Throne alongside Vision. Okay, I did like the Blue Marvel play and then you're looking to go blob in space thrown on the final turn. I guess that's not great for negative zone though. You have to win two locations to win a game of Marvel Snap. I think that Devil Dinosaur hit plus, uh, so the Devil Dinosaur blocks any Magneto plays, plus is just actually a pretty big card. Does kind of push back in Nalgadon's favor again, and now there's no retreat. So these players are battling for five cubes here. Jeff's gonna move in. Scar is gonna move in to Mount Vesuvius. And now we see that Cass is losing both locations other than the one that their opponent can play for this turn. Hmm. So a blob definitely means you are done. There's no retreating. There's no retreating. So how do you get out of this one? Blue Marvel is not enough to do anything here. No, because you can play Jeff plus Vision, but then you can't play Blue Marvel. Blob Center could do it. Well, it could, it could win in Space Throne, but then you still just lose in Negative Zone, so you have to move Vision over and just hope your opponent doesn't have Blob. There's no other plays. It's Magneto. So this is going to be really, really close here, but Malgadon does have it. That Vision is not going to be enough, so Malgadon wins the tournament, but I got to say, huge props to Cass able to go back to back in two tournaments, two weeks in a row. Absolutely impressive and obviously an impressive performance here from Nalgadon. And if you wanna watch their entire performance, you can find all of those videos on their channel, like I said, so definitely check that out. But before we go, I also want to check out all of the other deck lists from this event. So these are our final two deck lists here, both of the uh, blob lists. I just switched the, the sides of the screen that they're on. So the winner is now on my, it's confusing, it's mirrored for me. That's why my hands are like this. But um, yeah, the, the, the winner on the left side of the screen there with Nalgadon's blob lockjaw list. Pretty good, I think Scar is pretty great in the Lockjaw versions of this deck as well, as we saw with Sanutora's list that I was showcasing earlier this week. Uh, but then I also want to take a look at the third and fourth place lists as well. And in third place, 
we have this blob lockjaw list. And, oh, sorry, let me pull up the name of that player as well. So that is from, let me just make sure I am getting this right. Uh, Primus19 is their username. And I'll leave links to every player's uh, social media that they want me to plug and stuff in the video description as well. Uh, but this is definitely a lower curve Thanos lockjaw list if we compare it to the... Uh, Thanos Lockjaw list here out of Nalgadon. A little bit lower of a curve with uh, Psylocke and Shadow King in addition to Jeff uh, and then Gladiator. Uh, it's only like a slightly smaller curve playing one less card that costs uh, below five. Um, but uh, yeah, just, just slightly lower overall. Basically, Gladiator's the scar from the list, if you want to look at it that way. It's a card that allows you to commit some power to one location while also playing a stone in the same turn, with the upside of Gladiator being that it does shrink opposing blobs, which is kind of a cute thing that Gladiator can do, as we've seen with... Um, Gladiator and Maximus packages recently. And then the other list that got fourth place in this event was Silver Surfer. So shout out to this Silver Surfer player, Punk Pow Pow, uh, or Punk Pow Pow. They were the only player not to play Blob in the top four, so definitely just some props to that. But Silver Surfer, I think, is another deck that we like occasionally see sneak into the top four of these events. It definitely still has some merit, and this version is playing two other season pass cards in the form of Dakin and Sebastian Shaw. So this list could definitely still have some work. I haven't personally tried it myself. I don't own Sebastian Shaw either, uh, but definitely props just for playing a non-blob deck and managing to do well with it. They also let me know that they don't always play Shadow King in the list. Sometimes they play Negasonic Teenage Warhead instead in that slot. Uh, so you can play either of those options. Uh, and on that same note, Primus also mentioned for this list that they were looking to try to find a way to put Blue Marvel in the list, but they aren't exactly sure what they would want to cut to throw that in. But there you are. There are this week's top four deck lists. I'll throw the winners on the screen here again to finish out the video. Actually, you know what? They had enough time on the screen. Here's the top four list one more time. But for today, that is going to be it for me. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm No Lux Given. Peace.